Have any of you ever passed by a mall kiosk with a pushy salesman just insisting they put some dead sea skin scrub on your hand? Then maybe you buy it for an asinine amount of money only to never use it again? Well, it turns out that they may have been an MLM that you've encountered and believe me, they have far worse problems than aggressive sales tactics. They prey on immigrants, have had quite a few lawsuits under their belt and their business model will leave you feeling far from squeaky clean. Before we get into today's episode, I wanna let you know about a little secret project that I've been creating behind the scenes. I've created a new channel called Thinkology. So if you like slightly shorter content than my main channel from time to time and where everything's maybe not so depressing and sad all the time, make sure to check it out. Now, while I won't be personally voicing it, I have sourced some amazing talent to bring this new channel to life. This new channel will cover history on Mondays, creepy and spooky things on Tuesdays, nature on Wednesdays, crime on Thursdays, and trivia on Fridays. So if that's something that interests you, make sure to check out the link in the description box to check out Thinkology. So hello and welcome to Multi-Level Mondays, a weekly series all about pyramid schemes, Ponzi schemes, multi-level marketing, and other forms of business fraud. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're going to be talking about secret, and it's spelled S-E-A-C-R-E-T. Secret to me sounds like what a young teenage girl would name an MLM when they love mermaids and are trying to be edgy, right? Like it's secret. I don't know. It just has those vibes from its cringeworthy company name. Anyway, as eye roll inducing as the name might be, this company has some serious scandals behind it. So let's dive right into this MLM. And if you enjoy taking a look at topics about crimes, Ponzi schemes, pyramid schemes, and MLMs, make sure that you're subscribed with the notifications on and let me know what you think about today's episode in the comments. This company's history is a little bit muddled because it depends on which source you look at to see when they were founded. And so obviously, you know, that means we're not off to a good start. But some say they didn't start until 2011, but the journey really begins in 2000 with two brothers, Isaac and Moti Shabbat. Moti had come from Israel to the United States to save money for medical school. But as one source puts it, he caught the entrepreneurial bug and ended up staying. When Isaac came to visit, Moti mistakenly thought he had come to join the business. The first night when I landed, my brother called my parents and told them we were going to do business together, he says. He didn't have enough money, so he told them we needed some support from them. By the time the two brothers cleared up the confusion, their parents had sold all their possessions and put the entire family on a plane to the US. Isaac was in a bind. He had recommitted to the Israeli military, but now his whole family was here with less than $60,000 in assets. Those are some incredibly supportive parents, might I say, selling absolutely everything you have to put into like an ice cream truck or whatever when your sons don't even have a plan. I mean, it seems risky, but for the brothers, it ended up working out, it seems. He called his friends, begging them to come and help, even though he couldn't buy their plane tickets or pay them. They stuck upon the idea of selling toys in kiosks during the Christmas season. And over the next four months, they made $4 million in revenue. They then split the profits evenly among the group. But by that time, none of them wanted to return to Israel. We were able to create a culture of people and friends coming together, standing behind one mission and achieving success, Isaac says. So they pulled their resources again. By that time, 120 more people had heard of our success and showed up to be a part of it, he says. That's how we got started. It wasn't long before the brothers saw a gap in the US market with Dead Sea products. The Dead Sea is known for having concentrated natural mineral salts, but they realized at the start of this entrepreneur entrepreneurial journey of theirs that, as they put it, there were no Dead Sea products for sale in the US. They began selling Israeli brands out of kiosks and in 2005, they formulated their own products. Older 2008 articles from the Wall Street Journal say how these kiosks know how to catch you. And in 2009, some people began telling their story about the Dead Sea salt sellers online. One user said the salesman told them they didn't need to be embarrassed or quote, feel gay about taking care of themselves. The user speculated that the outward homophobia they displayed during sales pitches was because the seller assumed that since the mall was a Bible thumping area, this person would simply agree with them. As it turns out, the person they were trying to sell to was gay and didn't take too kindly to the homophobia. And I can't believe that this was secret and not a different Dead Sea cosmetic company, which there were a few, but the point still stands. These mall kiosk sellers became known for being pushy and occasionally jumping over the line of professionalism. However, a few bad 
experiences aside, Secret was taking off. And by 2010, they were a $100 million business. And as Isaac puts it, we wanted to be the apple of skincare. Although these mall kiosk salespeople were notorious for being pushy around the holidays at that time, and some people have claimed that it's these beauty product people that irritated them the most, this doesn't mean they weren't doing anything that was illegal. Yet another source called the Data Lounge specifically called out Israeli vendors, and they stated, at malls across the country, shoppers are being besieged by a determined crop of salespeople, young Israelis who man mobile carts and have no hold barred selling style. These workers are approaching passing mall shoppers or calling out from their sales station pitching body lotions, irons, toys, and knickknacks. They demonstrate their wares by flying remote control helicopters, steaming shirts, and applying makeup. Instead of charging American style fixed prices, they harness the culture of the bazaar and often quote numbers based on what they think a customer will be willing to pay. Typically, the mall stints are a fast way to amass cash to finance a globe-trotting trip, a rite of passage for many Israelis after they complete their mandatory military service. The Israelis' hands-on approach irks some Americans. After fielding complaints about over-aggressive vendors, some mall operators have taken measures. Some non-Israeli cart operators have mixed feelings about the competition. Israelis are really hassling people a lot and people are losing respect for the carts, says Ahen Yus, a Turkish immigrant who sells jewelry, sunglasses, and toys at carts in about six 60 US malls. Some replies to this post are downright disgusting. One anonymous user said, quote, you just have to respond in a language they will understand. I find fuck off and die quite effective, end quote. However, others are much more level-headed and state, quote, as a Jew, I'm sorry to read this. They should respect American shopping culture and not try to impose a Middle Eastern style on us. It's disrespectful and harmful to the image of Israeli and American Jews, end quote. Shopping in the US and shopping in bazaars in Israel are two completely separate things. And I'm not saying that one is better than the other, it's just different. Here, if you say no thank you and start to walk away, that's kind of the end of it and it's respected. I think cursing someone out and telling them to die is super unnecessary though, even if this was just hyperbole. While Secret and Dead Sea product sellers may have gained a pushy reputation, this was only the beginning. Because then in late 2010, Betty came along. Betty had been brought on by secret vice president, Robert Mirovic, to help spearhead the development of a local sales force. To understand the products and the business, she went to work in a kiosk. At 19, she had already been successful in two direct sales companies. Her first day, she could see the quality of the products. Secret is known for its wow factor, she says. With virtually every one of our products, you'll see and feel a difference on the spot. We call it Turbo Cosmetics. She soon realized that Secret could find the right fit with indirect sales. It had all the elements, a high quality product, the story of the Dead Sea, an already established customer base, and credibility as a company. Even though Betty didn't know it, she was breaking all of Secret's sales records. They were about to offer her the position of global sales manager, but instead, Betty did something that changed the company forever. She convinced them to set up as an MLM. They officially launched as Secret, the MLM in 2011, and in 2002, they had over $12 million in direct sales. By 2013, it was $71 million. I believe Betty saved us by showing us network marketing, Isaac says. Betty is now a partner in the business and Secret's vice president of sales and training. Betty, 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 what have you done? You can see this a few ways, I suppose. Either Betty was a successful scammer at a young age by signing people up for an MLM and wanted secret products to become an MLM too, or she was genuinely naive to the harm that MLMs do and thought that, you know, since MLMs have been good so far, maybe secret would benefit from that. Now, I won't and can't assume her exact intentions, but either way, secret became incredibly self-serving or they did absolutely no research into what direct selling actually is. Neither is a great look for the company regardless. Unfortunately, even if if this clearly shows how little research secret CEOs are willing to do when it comes to their business, getting into direct sales did pay off for them. In 2018, they reported over $200 million worth of sales and direct selling articles have said how incredibly loyal their customer base is. I'm not sure that I believe that bit about how loyal their customer base is because for those of you that have been here for a while, you know that in actuality, an MLM's most active customers are usually their own downline. But we will get into those numbers in just a little bit. For now, let's take a look at their products and see if Secret and these Dead Sea products are really as fantastic as they claim. (music) 
Dead Sea products are honestly pretty popular. Ahava is another brand that has them. New Rock Biology has a Dead Sea mud mask on Amazon that's pretty popular. Premier is another brand with a few Dead Sea products. I think you get the picture. When I look up if Dead Sea is good for your skin, the first sites that pop up are obviously biased. It's from a website called Dead Sea Spa Care, so I'm pretty sure their answer would be yes. As for scientific studies and if this is proven to work, well, there's a bit of a lack of research there. Some dermatologists say it can help with skin rashes, but these results, as the Wall Street Journal puts it, should be taken with a grain of salt. Overall, results are mixed with some good and even one recent 2020 article stating that the short-term effects are noticeable against psoriasis, but long-term effects have not been observed. It's also worth noting that all these studies had a very small group of numbers. Only 18 people were in this one, so it doesn't even mean Dead Sea products work for everyone in this way either. Unfortunately, even before we get into the products, whatever benefit they may give may not be worth the environmental impact. Fist.org says, the water level of the Dead Sea drops by more than one meter per year. Thousands of sinkholes, sudden strong rainfall events, and flash floods are among others. The challenge is facing the population and the environment in the region. Now, I'm not saying this is all due to Dead Sea beauty products or anything. A lot of this is because of the increasing industrialization and the sea's water flow being reduced. I'm not blaming Secret for this, but just be clear. As geologist, Nicholas Waldman of Haifa University of Israel states, beauty companies mostly use the mud they don't necessarily take much water, so they aren't driving the depleting water levels. Nicholas has been studying the sediments of the Dead Sea for more than 15 years, so I'm going to trust his judgment on this one. However, the article also says this. So while your beauty products aren't wreaking havoc on this ocean, there's one important caveat. The minerals they contain are a non-renewable resource even though it will take many generations of Dead Sea product junkies to exhaust them. Once they're gone, they're gone. In light of that, some beauty companies that rely on the sea's minerals are taking an environmental stand and making sustainability a priority. Ahava, for example, the Israeli maker of products sourced from the Dead Sea, has designed and built the eco-friendly water recycling system and minimizes its environmental footprint whenever possible. If you're concerned about the impact that your products have on the landlocked ocean, your best bet is to do your research before buying to make sure the company's behind behind them practice sustainable harvesting methods. Secret has said that they strive to protect the Dead Sea from overexploitation, but I guess I've got mixed feelings about these Dead Sea products already. After all, the proof that they're superior is minimal at best with just a couple of very small statistics showing a positive result. Not to mention, if these minerals are so fantastic, can't we use the same minerals from a more sustainable source? Why does it have to be from the Dead Sea? Well, let's finally jump over to Secret's website to find out. Here's what they say. The Dead Sea's unique composition of natural minerals is produced from the dissolving surface salt created by the lake's gradual water evaporation process. The compound is then refined by the sun, which neutralizes the sodium chlorate in the salt and leaves behind only the mineral-rich compound in the evaporation pool. The final compound results in a total of 26 minerals, 12 of which do not exist in any other body of water making this one of the richest sources of naturally occurring minerals in the world. It's true, the Dead Sea is unique, but what, because of this unique composition that means we should draw from it? Isn't there some other way to get these minerals without using the shrinking natural resource? I decided to go ahead and do what I came to their site for and to take a look at their products and holy crap, this stuff is expensive. And to be fair, I figured it would be. MLMs are pretty well known for having some high prices, but this is outrageous. One facial cleanser is $35 and that's with the VIP price. Retail is $42. All because it's the mineral dead sea salt stuff that's in it. I decided to check out that other brand, Ahava, which is also known for their Dead Sea products, and they weren't even charging this much. In one of their toning cleansers, it was just over $30, still expensive, but about 25% off of what Secret's cost is. Ahava is also not an MLM. They've been around longer and their headquarters are in Israel. They've had their controversies, absolutely, and I'm not saying you should support them either or anything, but it just amazes me that a company that has been doing this longer and is located in Israel still doesn't charge MLM prices for their products. The other thing that pisses me off about Secret is the fact that they make their ingredient list difficult to find. I was really irritated when Mary Kay did this and Secret isn't getting a pass either. Does anyone see it or am I going crazy? If they're so unbelievably amazing and made with so many minerals, then why wouldn't Secret proudly display what's in their face washes? Hell, don't they legally have to for allergy reasons? It's like this for everything. Their mineral rich peeling gel has a list of key ingredients, but below that where it says Dead Sea ingredients, there's just nothing to click. There's no full list on anything. 
They have some slightly more reasonably priced face washes and then a $68 moisturizer, $77 eye boosters again, with nothing more than a few key ingredients listed. And the same scenario plays out again under their bath and body section and even their nutrition section where they sell chocolate shake dietary supplements, all the classic MLM nutrition products that we often see. Even their VIP price of $75 is ridiculously expensive when you look at any other meal replacement chocolate shake, whether it's Keto Science, Slim Fast, Garden of Life, Help, even other MLMs are not this bad. As for the ingredients, since I couldn't find anything on Secret's website, I went elsewhere. I guess saying the key ingredients are Dead Sea Minerals, quinoa, and papaya extract certainly sounds better, but Dead Sea Minerals are not the first ingredient on their list, and they're not even close. So if Secret is going to go around claiming that these products make a fantastic difference from the Dead Sea, then you know, you'd think those ingredients would be higher up on the list. The Secret's FAQ page has no answers as to why there's no ingredients on their site, even though they do have that ingredient list for their products when they're on Amazon. Again, if you can find the ingredients easily on their site, maybe it's just me and I'm just missing missing something here, but I have been on the struggle bus just to find what the hell are in these products. But the other question here is, do they work? Ultimately, if a product works exactly how it says, then maybe it's worth charging a bit more. I checked out BBB and there were only five reviews there and Secret had a high rating, about 4.2 stars. But when I checked out Consumer Affairs, they only had two stars based on 66 ratings. Though the most recent as of writing this seemed genuine and personal, a few of the positive reviews read like an advertisement. As for the negative reviews, one from Jennifer says that she felt obligated to give Secret a negative review after a traumatizing experience. She explains that she was lured in to try a hand cream for free, but she was pressured into buying a lot of expensive products. What she found odd was that there were no prices in the shop or the products, which was very strange in Europe. It seems like the theory about Secret sellers simply charging what they think you'll pay does hold water. Now that we've gotten through with all of that, we're going to talk about the lawsuits. Two of the biggest I could find were in 2016 and 2019. The one from 2016 states, Plaintiff Secret Spa International is a direct sales organization specializing in skincare products and containing ingredients or chemicals from the Dead Sea. The plaintiff in this case was Michelle K. Lee, who claims that the Secret logo is a ripoff that could be easily confused with the previously registered marks held by Procter & Gamble Company. And Procter & Gamble is an absolutely monster of a company, so it's not as if Secret could really hurt them. I'm not saying that justifies ripping off a logo that seems like that's in fact what Secret did, but my sympathies are a little limited. Normally the lawsuits I find really upsetting are those when an MLM is stealing from a small business owner, mistreating people, putting dangerous ingredients in their products, those kinds of things. I'm not saying this isn't important, but I think you guys understand where I'm coming from. Um, From what I found, this all has to do with Secret deodorant versus Secret the MLM. And personally, I don't think anyone's gonna get the two confused and it doesn't seem like Secret faced any consequences from this lawsuit, so let's just keep it moving. The 2019 lawsuit seems a little bit more serious. According to my source, Ephraim DeBush, the plaintiff, suffered injuries after falling through a warehouse skylight. Secret wasn't leasing it, so he argued that they were responsible for his injury. Secret also sublet portions of the building that were unused to companies Prisma and Direct, the lawsuit states. At the time of Efren's injury, David Ben Shabbat ran Direct and Elad Godib, a spa shareholder, ran Prisma and managed the warehouse for Secret Spa. In 2013, the warehouse roof began leaking over space Direct used. Gottlieb hired Prisma to repair the roof as he had done in the past for maintenance projects. On the morning of Efren's injury, Omar Unzueta and Valadin Nuvares, who worked for Prisma, came to the warehouse to perform repairs. David asked Efrem, who had construction experience, to go up on the roof, take pictures of what they were doing and provide his professional opinion on the work. The Debushes sued Chambers, Spa, Direct, and Prisma, alleged that each was negligent. Relevant to this appeal, they alleged Direct and Prisma were liable because each had direct control and or authority to control the warehouse where Ephraim fell. Direct and Prisma moved for summary judgment, contending that they did not owe Ephraim a duty of care because neither possessed the premises at the time of Ephraim's fall. The trial court agreed and granted the motion. The Debushes settled their claims against Chambers and Secret Spa and timely appealed the court's rulings with respect to Direct and Prisma. The thing is, these people with Direct and Prisma knew the place needed work, otherwise Ephraim wouldn't have been there in the first place. And if Secret was subletting the place, they ultimately were the ones on the lease, so they would be the ones responsible, right? Now, although these lawsuits seem pretty minor, the largest scandal was about to hit a boiling point in 2014. And before we dig into that, let's just take a quick break to thank today's sponsors. 
Fall is here and despite the unreasonable warmth, I still want my fall meals to have some pumpkin flavoring in them. And that's where I actually get some help from HelloFresh where the pumpkin harvest is on. They've got anything from pumpkin cinnamon rolls and a ton of other Friendsgiving ready sides, not to mention fresh pro portioned ingredients that travel from farm to you in less than a week. Plus, HelloFresh gets you better value. It's over 30% cheaper than shopping at grocery stores with pre-portioned ingredients so you don't spend extra money on excess food that ends up going to waste. HelloFresh makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. So if you wanna get started and try HelloFresh this season, make sure to go to hellofresh.com slash MLM14 and use code MLM14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. That's up to 14 free meals and free shipping when you go to hellofresh.com slash MLM14 and use code MLM14. This episode is also sponsored by Purple. Sometimes it can feel like the world is against you from getting a good night's sleep. There's already tons of things to be anxious about. And then there's the heat. So thanks climate change for that one. But when you have a purple mattress, you can sleep cool and comfortable no matter what the world throws your way. That's because only purple mattresses have the grid. It's a unique ventilated design that lets air flow through it, which helps keep you cool, even when it's well, you know, what it's been. The grid is supportive to your back and legs while somehow also being cushiony for your shoulder, neck, and hips. Purple is comfort reinvented and right now, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more when you go to purple.com slash MLM and use promo code MLM. Again, that's purple.com slash MLM, promo code MLM for 10% off any order over $200 or more. Purple.com slash MLM, promo code MLM. One article from Times of Israel explains that these salesmen weren't attracting the FDA or SEC like we had seen in the past. Instead, Secret and other mall kiosks were rousing the attention of the FBI because of possible labor fraud, and they state. The issue came to a head in New Zealand earlier this summer where a Dead Sea spa kiosk in an Auckland mall was accused of swindling an elderly lady and forcing her to buy $5,000 worth of cosmetics. According to Cambo Live, the New Zealand Channel 3 TV program that first aired the story about the elderly elderly woman, Dead Sea Spa had also charged an autistic man $4,400 for cosmetics in a half hour period, though $1,000 of the charges were not connected to products. On a separate occasion, a saleswoman sold $17,000 of products to a man with short-term memory loss who could not remember purchases he made just minutes earlier. Campbell Live reported that the Westfield Mall chain decided on July 1st to evict Dead Sea Spa from kiosks in its malls across New Zealand. The reports exposed a dark underbelly of Israelis pursuing work around the world at mall kiosks kiosks and carts. In addition to aggressive and predatory sales tactics, the kiosks often skirt legal issues, evading local taxes and employing Israelis who do not have proper working permits. Up to 200 Israelis can work in New Zealand each year under the working holiday program, but it is unclear if the Dead Sea Spa workers featured in the Campbell Live reports were legally employed. And I need to make this absolutely clear here that I'm not against immigration or immigrants from Israel working in the US. And this is not a matter of xenophobia here, but a matter of paying employees properly, paying taxes and doing things by the books. When Secret operates this way, it's not only going to make them look questionable and often look illegal, but they're also taking advantage of those immigrants that they're offering this opportunity to as well. The United States has been looking into this matter for a while, since about 2007. A WikiLeaks cable from 2010 noted that few Israelis made decent money since employers often failed to pay fair wages and there was no way to enforce that because the workers themselves were illegal. The cable noted in a few cases, some Israelis actually ended up in debt. After adding in other expenses, they ended up having to pay their employer money after they left, earning nothing, contrary to what was promised, the cable stated. If the workers do not meet a minimum sales requirement, they are immediately fired and thrown out of the company housing, which can be difficult if they do not know anyone else in the country. Unfortunately, so long as this particular industry that Secret is a part of neglects to take this legal route, the employees are going to suffer. Now, this is where I have to make it abundantly clear that I'm not trying to accuse Secret of doing this. There are people that do this legally, 
Two years after that article was released, another article by the Times of Israel came out that explained how the US actually filed charges in this illegal mall kiosk community. It explains that the aggressive tactics have not only brought attention to these kiosks, but there are those who are facing legal troubles for employing these Israelis. Chief among the accused is American Israeli Omer Ger Geiger, 36, whose company Rasco operated kiosks in several states. He is charged with illegally employing Israelis who arrived in the US on B2 tourist visas, which do not allow for holders to work in the country. Ger Geiger, a resident of Raleigh, North Carolina, is further accused of helping several Israelis file false applications to extend their tourist visas. Ger Geiger is also accused of failing to deduct tax contributions from the salaries he was paying the illegal workers, according to North Carolina's News and Observer website. The nine other Israelis charged in the case were employed by Ger Geiger. Prosecutors have estimated the company's turnover over the past five years at $14.5 million and have asked the court to collect that sum from the company's assets. Ger Geiger has been charged with 34 counts of conspiracy to defraud the US, visa fraud, encouraging and inducing illegal entry, transporting illegal aliens, and conspiracy to launder money. Whether or not you think they have absolutely nothing to do with it, Secret has been a massive player in the game. If you'll recall, the founder said no one was selling Dead Sea products in malls before they came along. So I guess you could say they at least fueled all of this and were founders of what's now become an aggressive and at times a very problematic industry. It's the employees I truly feel bad for here because they're suffering and being preyed upon and potentially barely being paid for a thing after leaving home. There's also some evidence to suggest that Secret is in fact involved with this illegal side to things, at least in Canada. In January, 2012, the Ottawa Sun wrote that 29 people busted by the Canada Border Services Agency last month for illegally working in Ottawa have been ordered to leave the country. They all admitted the allegation that they were working without authorization. So that's why the removal order was rendered for all of them, said Immigration and Refugee Board of Canada spokesperson, Robert Gervais. The illegal workers are all Israeli citizens as initially reported by the Sun, except for one person from France. And they range from 19 to 36 years old. Most of them had arrived only a month or two before their arrest, noting that they all held visitor status before entering Canada as tourists. Workers selling Dead Sea items at two booths, Secret and Dead Sea, were cuffed along with others working for businesses named Heat in a Click, Premier Lotion, Active Energy, Bella Pierre, Premier Spa, and Extreme Energy. Now, I won't pretend that I know the exact level of awareness Secret or its higher ups had. I've got to protect myself here. All I will say is, is that this industry is shady as hell. Workers have come in illegally, been treated poorly, sell aggressively, lie about the products and refunds and sell at incredibly high prices, all based on how they profile people. And all of that has been proven to happen with Dead Sea products, whether or not Secret wants to admit that. And the fact is with so little evidence that Dead Sea skin products are even that much more beneficial, especially in the long term, I'm just gonna stick to the products I already have. Now, unfortunately, Secret is far from over. Recently, back in 2020, they teamed up with another MLM that I've already taken a massive shit on, World Ventures. Now, World Ventures took a really hard hit from COVID, so this was kind of their way of expanding by joining forces with a beauty industry product that's overseas. They have acquired the secret direct selling branch of the company, so I guess one can only hope that they'll run it into the ground soon enough, though both of these MLMs will eventually crash and burn. At least that's my hope. Now for the final question of the day, the one that, the Huns at Secret may know the truth of, but may not want to be truthful about. Can you make money with Secret? Not unless you know a bunch of rich people with low standards is the answer here. If someone does their research, then I doubt they'd go for Secret. I admit, when I'm at a store and buying beauty products, I'm not going to Google and dive into everything right there on the spot, but I will research general ingredients and brands before I go in so that I can be more informed while I'm shopping. I also wouldn't spend like 50 to several hundreds or thousands of dollars on face products without doing just just a hair of digging into it. So I guess in order to sell secret, you need to know rich people that also can't use Google, which really only leaves some boomers. One source states, secret distributors make sales through a replicated website or order forms. The style means that distributors don't need to purchase and then resell products. The compensation plan claims that distributors can earn 150% retail profit. The figure is accurate, but also misleading. 
Basically, distributors earn the difference between retail prices and distributor prices. Secret gives the example of a recovery day mask. This retails for $349.99 and has a wholesale price of just $149.99, giving a $200 profit. Earning a $200 profit for a $349.99 sale is actually pretty impressive, and that's more than a 50% commission. Many secret products are less expensive than that, so you won't earn $200 on every sale. Still, it's unusual to find a commission rate this high. I've got to wonder if this is why secret reps allegedly just charge whatever they think someone can afford. Are they being paid whatever the difference is between retail and selling price at the kiosk too? And as a fantastic as a compensation plan as this sounds for average products like face wash, moisture, makeup remover, all those products we went over, the price difference was seven or $10, maybe $15, nothing super impressive. Another source, the finance guy states, there are many ways to earn with secret. And if you get a lot of promotions, you can earn some large bonuses. However, we want to know how much secret agents are actually making. We managed to find a copy of the secret income disclosure, which is presented as a single image shown below. And they show the image here. It's interesting that the largest group by far is the entry level agents. This shows us that 47.8% of secret agents earn absolutely no commission. They try and explain that these agents might be earning commission from retail sales, but we find it highly unlikely. What we are seeing is that most secret agents never make it past the bottom rank. Another 45.7% of agents are only entitled to basic commissions. Secret tells us that this group can earn up to an average of $171 for the year. Doing some math, we see that 93.5% of secret agents earn less than $200 for the year. The final grouping, which they refer to as the leaders group, is the top 6.5% of all secret agents. If we look at the earnings within this group, we see that only the top 1.84% earn over $35,000. Remember that this is a breakdown of the leaders. So if we apply some more math, we can see that only 0.12% of agents earn more than they could in a regular job. In other words, 99.88% of secret agents earn less than minimum wage. So back to answer that question. No, you can't. I get it that there's plenty of people who don't wanna work a nine to five job or a minimum wage job, but this shouldn't be the path for anyone to take. I feel like Secret is preying upon Israeli immigrants too, taking advantage of them just as much as they take advantage of the people at the mall that may feel cornered. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing so that you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and spending some of your time here. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.